The rebuilding started with the appointment of former Rovers midfielder Ian Snodin as the club's new manager, and he soon brought in his brother Glyn to work alongside him. Well, what we had to do was try to re-establish the credibility of the club because we were a joke club, the, the, you know, a pub team really I mean uh, but Ian and Glyn Snowden were associated with the club in, in better times uh, they've both gone on to play in the Premier League uh, we got Neville South all in um, you know uh, we tried to sort of create uh, some sort of interest and we succeeded in that I mean the first game away at Dover we literally had to pick players up as we were going down the motorway we lost 1-0 and we celebrated we thought that was a great result um, and I think at one of our, I think our first home league game was against Southport. Again, we lost one nil, but uh, we played pretty well, and we had over three thousand there. And bearing in mind the season before, the gates were down to about eight hundred. We were bottom of the conference until Christmas, and we had a great win at Rushton and Diamonds, who were at the other end of the table. Uh, I think Ian Durden scored a hat trick, and uh, that sort of gave us a platform and we escaped relegation you know by the skin of our teeth because to go down again I think would have been catastrophic uh, to go to the Unibond I think it was then uh, but yes we, we won the Macmillan Trophy which was like the Conference League Cup which I suppose in you know where Cups rank was pretty low but we had seven and a half thousand full house that's all we could get in Belby at the time which showed the latent interest in the club Fireworks off the pitch at Bellevue, hopefully we'll get them on it as well. Such is the interest with the Doncaster Rovers, faithful in this game, in which they could win their first major trophy for 30 years. The kickoffs had to be put back by 15 minutes or so. A near capacity 7,000 crowd expected, a goodly contingent up from Farnborough as well, with the club having paid for the transport for their long-suffering supporters, who may have something to cheer about following their relegation from the conference after finishing bottom of the table. But hopefully it'll be the Reds that go marching on tonight. Doncaster Rovers already leading by one goal to nil from the first leg. In fact, it's a corner kick. Went out right by the flag. Goodwin is going to take it. Five in the box. Two just outside for him to try to pick out. It's aimed towards Barnwell. His header's on target. The shot goes in. Straight through a whole mass of defenders through Colin Sutherland. Magnificent opening to the game for Doncaster Rovers. Inside seven minutes, Doncaster one, Farnborough nil, 2 nil on aggregate. Well, that's just what Doncaster wanted to settle any early nerves. A corner from Goodman on the right-hand side. The initial shot was cleared away. Came nicely through to Colin Sutherland through a crowd of players. And Stuart McKenzie, the keeper, had no chance. Rather given away there to Ian Durden, and he picks out Barnwell. Watson streaking through into the middle. Durden's in there as well. It's aimed over towards Durden on his head. Magnificent header, Ian Durden, the leading goal scorer, restored to the side tonight. Well, he's not just been practicing his heading in training; they've been practicing the goal celebrations as well. Well, he was instrumental in setting it up. He was the one who found Barnwell. Barnwell's cross was superb. Durden, he had the goal to aim at, went for the top corner. The keeper, McKenzie, had no chance. Doncaster 2, Farnborough nil on the night, 3-0 on aggregate, and that could very well be the cup. Goodwin, who had a chance in the first half. Tries to set dirt in a way. He was being held back slightly there by Barry Miller. It's turned across and it might go in, and it has gone in. And that's a magnificent goal from Ian Durden. Absolutely superb. And that has won the Ensley Challenge trophy for Doncaster Rovers. Brought back into the side tonight. There looked to be nothing on. But Mackenzie was well off his line. Durden had spotted it. Turns it up and over him. Doncaster Rovers 3, Farnborough 0, 4 0 on aggregate. They might as well give them the trophy now. 
We're in stoppage time at the end of 90 minutes, or at the end of 180 minutes if you prefer. Graham Atkins blows the whistle. The fans stream onto the field. A joyous celebration at Bellevue. They sang about 30 years of hurt for Euro 96. It's been 30 years of hurt for Doncaster Rovers since they last won a major trophy. In 1969, they collected the old fourth division championship. And in 1999, they've become the first club from Yorkshire to win a trophy this season. Perhaps the only one as well. They've clinched the Ensley Challenge trophy. They've been in Farnborough Town, 3-0 on the night, 4-0 on aggregates. And who would have thought 12 months ago when we saw the crowds on the field here at Bellevue, when they were angry, they were distraught, they were in tears, that 12 months on, we would see them back on the field in their thousands, the tears this time of joy. A chap called Colin Sutherland was man of the match and uh, Ian Durden scored a great goal. And I actually felt that, you know, yes, you know, we, we, we are at least a football club again now. David Penny lifts the trophy aloft for Doncaster Rovers. Many of the supporters here, arms raised, will never have seen Doncaster Rovers win anything before. Hopefully, they'll be seeing them win plenty in the future. And it was great, you know, Ian and Glynstone who won the first trophy, I as a, a chairman who won my first trophy. Um, you know, at the time it was a great thing for us. Uh, uh, but when you think how things have unfolded, it was a, a very small thing, really. It was a case of Deja Bellevue the following year. The Snodding brothers had been replaced by Steve Wignall. The goals from Jason Minette and Dave Penny saw Rovers beat Kingstonian to win the Conference Cup again. The real aim, though, was regaining league status, and Dave Penny was soon ready to make the step up to management after the huge impact he'd had as a player. Dave Penny, I signed, um, you know, virtually straight away. Uh, Dave Parker, who was working with me, said, this is a great player, uh, Dave Penny, and I remembered him scoring a great goal against Ongster Rovers when he played for Swansea. And I asked uh, Glyn, uh, no, Ian Snowden, I said, what do you think to Dave Penny? And anyway, he said, yeah, I liked him. Anyway, I had a meeting with Dave Penny because uh, he was about to sign for Rochdale. And we had a meeting with Ian McMahon and myself. I had a meeting uh, with uh, Dave Penny, persuade him to come to Donny. Uh, Ian Snowden was very happy about that. He was a great player for us. And when I think it was Steve Wignall uh, left the club, Dave Penny came in as caretaker manager, did very well. And he was my manager for five years and he did very, very well for the, for the club. <laughs> 